Hey YouTubers, all right, I'm back with a uh, very non-controversial topic and it's also very original and the topic is uh, CD versus vinyl sound. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about theory um, and I don't have any super strong opinions about this topic actually. I'm um, fairly happy listening to CD and I'm happy listening to vinyl. Um, the large percentage of the vinyl I have is vinyl that I've owned, uh, you know, since I bought it new back in the 80s and 90s. Uh, so I'm not new to vinyl. Uh, I'm new to sort of being interested in it and playing it a lot again, but uh, uh, I'm not new to it. And I don't have any romantic uh, notions about it. Same thing with photography, you know, film photography and digital photography. Anyway, I'm. Uh, rambling a bit. So uh, the reason I want to talk about it is an experience I had this weekend. Um, I've been shopping a bit for new speakers as if I need them. I don't. Uh, but you know sometimes you just want to change the... I've had the set that I'm using right now, the PSBs that you've seen in other videos. I've had those for coming up on 10 years. So as I've mentioned in other videos, I uh, miss the magna planers that I had way back when but I also feel like I need to listen to some other speakers and uh, I'm not listening to just any boxes I'm kind of uh, you know trying to listen to speakers that have slightly different designs so uh, one thing I did this weekend was I listened to some teal speakers I've looked at them in the past and they always struck me as overly expensive and they still do <laughs> but uh uh, I kind of uh, liked these, and these are not the traditional teal sloped baffle design. These are a, a coaxial speaker, and the frequency range it only goes down to like the high 40s, but it sounds much better than that sounds. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm not here to talk about the speakers. I'm just saying that I was listening to these speakers. And the sales guy that set me up with the speakers wanted to make sure he had them set up properly. I was using my own music, but he put on uh, this Enbison, uh recording, uh, except he had a CD. And he, so he did that. And uh, I, you know, I've heard this, and uh, it's just not what I wanted to hear that day. So I pulled it right back out and started playing the CDs that I had taken in, uh, CDs that I had listened to more. So I went through all of those and these speakers are sounding really good. Um, they're on my short list now. Uh, I might uh, talk about that separately. Anyway, um, I eventually said, well, let's just put the uh, Anbison back in. This, by the way, is an excellent, excellent recording. Uh, it's very intimate, uh, so if you're into jazz at all, um, you might want to check it out. The recording's fabulous. I, I gotta stop saying that word. The recording is really beautiful. It's um, very pleasant. Let's just say it's very pleasant to listen to. And as I'm listening, I start to notice uh, this got a lot. It's uh, basically piano. Um, some of it's just solo piano and voice, and uh, then it's piano, bass, and drums. Um, on the first song, which is just piano and voice, I started to notice that on the trailing edge of the piano notes, there's like this sizzly little distortion. And yeah, it's, I, I can't, I can't do it. I can go, it's kind of like a, a sibilance without the S. Uh, so it's this almost staticky, very high, and it kind of trailed off with the tail end of the piano notes. Once I became aware of it, I couldn't stop hearing it, and uh, unless the music was loud, you know, once there were a lot of other instruments in, couldn't really hear it as much. But if there was ever a solo trailing piano note, uh, it would jump out. It was like a sore thumb. It just stuck out like crazy. So. Uh, I thought to myself, I wonder if the vinyl has um, this artifact on it. It could. Um, 
vinyl doesn't have to be 100% analog. You could do a digital recording and a digital mix down and all that good stuff and then target uh, vinyl as your final medium. So uh, one of the first things I did when I uh, fired up the stereo today was I put this album on and no it doesn't it doesn't have that artifact on it. So um, I have heard artifacts like that in the past listening to CD. One of them was a Joni Mitchell CD and I would hear it when I was listening on headphones and it was at the tail end of a song where it faded out as it faded out, you would hear it uh, sort of disintegrate. And I hadn't really heard that on um, other CDs other than just sometimes the mix, mix being bad and, and the CD sounding hard. Uh, but I always just chalk that up to uh, the mastering or the mix uh, that was done, the engineering that was done on the album. So that's my uh, CD versus vinyl story. I know it went on very long. But uh, that's an example of an audiophile um, recording that I would say sounds better on vinyl than on CD, if only because the CD has uh, these distortion artifacts on it, and it's a real shame. I also wonder, uh, I have to admit, whether um, the teals, uh, which are very high resolution speakers, uh, allowed me to hear that, and maybe it is happening here at my house and I don't hear it because my PSBs are not as high resolution. The PSBs aren't bad speakers, they're really nice speakers, so I don't think that's it, but it is a possibility. thought I'd throw it out there. So uh, there's my ramble. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you later.